Good morning, I'm Joanna Bevan. I'm the inspector in charge of uh, Toronto Police Sex Crimes. Uh, today I'm here to talk about a human trafficking investigation that we've been conducting for the last uh, seven, eight months. During the period of October 2014 and April 2015, the Sex Crimes Human Trafficking Enforcement Team conducted an investigation focusing on local, st local street gang members known as the Complex Crip Gangsters. This investigation revealed that this gang was operating a human trafficking ring in Toronto, the GTA, and across Canada. The project was named Project Guardian. The investigation revealed that members and associates of this gang were forcing females into prostitution for monetary gain. The female victims involved ranged in ages from 15 years to 33 years and were, were recruited from Nova Scotia, Ontario, Alberta, and Edmonton. It is alleged these female victims were recruited from dance clubs, schools, and group homes. These pimps would also surf the internet and befriend unsuspecting victims on websites such as Facebook and Instagram. These predators, the pimps, would romance the victims by showering them with attention and gifts in order to create a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. During this, what we call the honeymoon phase, they would slowly manipulate the victims into thinking prostitution was glamorous and lucrative. Once the victim agreed to the plan, their relationship would change dramatically. It is at this point the accused parties would take photos of the victims in lingerie and in various stages of undress, and would post these pictures along with ads on websites listing their sexual services with the accompanying photos. In order to control and isolate these girls, these pimps would take their cell phone information and identification and would regularly transport them to various hotels and motels within Toronto, York Region, Peel Region, Hamilton, London, Kitchener, Niagara Falls, Winnipeg, and Edmonton. These girls would be forced to work and turn over all the money they had earned over to the accused. If the victims did not make enough money, they would be physically beaten and threatened in order for them to work harder the next day. The victims would, on average, have 10 to 15 clients per day. Several victims were able to escape their pimps and were brave enough to come to police with their story. The victims were given support from various Toronto Police Service partners such as Covenant House, East Metro, Youth Services, and Deborah's Gate. On Thursday, April 2nd, 2015, members of the Human Trafficking Enforcement Team executed 13 criminal code search warrants in the area of Jane Street and Wilson Avenue, and also in the area of Kipling and Rexdale Boulevard in the City of Toronto. Various teams and services assisted with the search warrants, both within Toronto as well as outside services. As a result of the investigation and the execution of the search warrants, nine individuals were arrested with a total of 61 human trafficking and drug-related offences. One individual is still outstanding on five human trafficking offences to which an arrest warrant has been obtained. During the investigation and the execution of the search warrants, police seized um, the following items. Multiple electronic devices such as cell phones and computers, various drugs such as cocaine, crack, heroin, MDMA, identification relating to the victims and documents um, of their postings on the internet, um, and many, many more um, evidence relating to the crime. The following people, all of Toronto, have been charged. Marcus Kumsel, 21 years. Traffic in persons times three. Material benefit times three. Exercise control times three. Failed to comply with recognizance and assault times two. Joel Edwards, 22 years. Trafficking in persons times two. Material benefit times two. Possession of schedule one substance for the purpose of trafficking times four. Possession of schedule two substance for the purposes of tracking, trafficking times two. Possession of proceeds of property crime obtained by crime times three, fail to comply, comply recognizance times two, and fail to comply with probation. Tyro, Tyrone Matthews, 20 years, possession of schedule two substance, possession of property obtained by crime over 5,000, possession of proceeds of crime over 5,000, and fail to comply three counts. Felix Funes Vasquez, 19 years, obstruct peace officer, Possession of Schedule 1 substance, possession of Schedule 2 substance, possession of property obtained by crime over 5,000, and possession of proceeds of crime over 5,000. Shane Hendry, 18 years, possession of Schedule 1 substance, possession of Schedule 2 substance, possession of property obtained by crime over 5,000, possession of proceeds of crime over 5,000, fail to comply with court disposition, three counts. Samisha Murray, 19 years, possession of Schedule 1 substance, possession of Schedule 2 substance, possession of property obtained by crime over 5,000, and possession of proceeds of crime over 5,000. Adulawab Sheikh, 
18 years, possession of Schedule One substance for the purpose of trafficking, possession of Schedule II substance for the purpose of trafficking, and possession of proceeds of crime. Caron Christie, 32 years, possession of Schedule One substance for the purpose of trafficking, possession of Schedule II substance for the purpose of trafficking, and possession of proceeds of crime. Chanel Espinoza, 20 years, trafficking in persons under 18 years times two, material benefit, procuring, exercise control. The following person has not yet been apprehended, but an arrest warrant is out for this person. Levi Alexander, 19 years, and he's wanted for trafficking in persons under 18 years, material benefit, exercise control, obstruct justice, and obtain bail in a false name. We believe that there are many more victims out there relating to this investigation. I am encouraging any victim to please call us at Sex Crimes at 416-808-7474. I'm also requesting anyone with any information relating to this investigation to contact this number or contact Crime Stoppers at 416-222-TIPS. As always, while the Toronto Police Service encourage all effective members to come forward and to report to police, we want to make sure that everyone has access to support, uh, to support services regardless of their decision to proceed criminally. Thank you. How long do you think that this uh Well, we've been investigating it just during that time period, but um, I believe that it's been running for a significant amount of time. We're just going through all the evidence that we seized at uh, the search warrants, and that'll give us a better better knowledge of exactly how long it has been running. The victims that have come forward, um, how far back do their stories go? Um, they go back a, a significant amount of time. Each one of them is different. Um, they're all recruited in, in different ways. Um, and. Um, some of them have a longer relationship with the actual accused than with others. All Canadian born or foreigners around? Uh, Canadian born. How many victims are we talking about? We're talking four victims at the moment, but we do know that there's more out there. And we're, that's what we're trying to reach out to them to let them know that we want to help them, help them through this. And if they don't want to uh, proceed criminally, then we will help them get the services that they, they do need. How many more are you looking for? Like just I, I can't give a number on that. Did they suffer any uh, kind of injuries or anything like that other than obviously the emotional trauma? Well, in, in, in most cases, what happens is they're mentally abused initially. All their hu basic human rights are taken away from them. Um, they are so structured that they can't make choices. Um, and then when they start actually, if they do try to make a choice and try to leave the situation, then they're physically beaten and they, they do sustain injury. Um, and they just get so beaten and so abused that they're afraid to actually then make the choice to try and leave. Uh, this uh, happened on April 2nd, the, the warrants that were carried out. I know that there was some um, evidence that came out of those warrants that delayed this announcement today. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, what was found during those warrants that um, you know, delayed the, the announcement of these arrests? Well, anytime we do a warrant, we, we obtain significant amount of evidence, and it takes time to actually go through, go through the evidence and link certain people. So that's what we did. Um, and we are still in the process, but we felt we're at a time now where you know, we can bring the information forth. Part of this investigation, too, with the human trafficking aspect, there was individuals that were arrested for uh, possession of stolen property, and we've now linked them to uh, um, approximately 20 break and enters in the 33 division area. So a lot of property was seized at um, those addresses that 33 Division will be investigating. So um, they uh, occurred in the um, Van Horn Parkway Forest um, Forest Manor area. So if anyone, any victims are out there that have lost property through break and enter, they need to get in touch with 33 Division in their detective office. Uh, just, just remind me that the, the ages of the victims seem to be fairly really wide. Did you remember that? It was from like teenage years to 30 seconds. Correct. 15 to 33. So the yes. four that came forward, they all were able to escape the captors and came forward to police. Is Correct. Right? Yes. What are their ages? Um, the ages of them were between 15 and um, I want to say 18. Okay. So um, where are you getting the age 30? Well, we know there's other victims out there. Um, we know that uh, some, w a lot of times with uh, human trafficking investigations, um, we know that the women have been forced into this trade. It takes some time sometimes for the, the person that's been involved in this lifestyle to actually come forward and speak to us about it, to actually um, 
be able to deal with what has happened with themselves and to have the strength to come forward. Um, so, and in some cases, what ends up happening, they come in as a, a, a person that's been procured and controlled, and then they actually become a part of it, and they end up procuring girls into the actual scene and having them work. And what happens there is it takes um, a lot of the time, it'll take the pressure off of them to perform as many, many tricks. Um, and the, the new girls will come in and they'll be forced into it. So, sorry, I, sorry. Just, I guess I'm trying to figure out, if you gave the film specific age range, if, if, if the four that came forward are, are sort of in their teenage years, between mm -hmm. 15 and 19, or whatever the age is, but you know that there are girls, women out there as old as their 30s mm -hmm. who are being recruited. How, how do you specifically know that? Well, we have evidence relating to that. So I, I can't go into that, but um, we have information that we still have work to do. Um, we have spoken to some of them, and they don't want to proceed at this time. And as I say, you know, the, the biggest thing for us is to get these girls um, help and uh, get them help to deal with what they've gone through. And if at some point they are ready to come forward with information um, to proceed, then definitely we'll be here for that as well. Could you elaborate on the how they were uh, coerced, like first they, they were taken in front of schools or? Right, so what, what ends up happening is the victim, uh, the person is usually a person that's seeking some form of, of attention. They're either running from something or they're running to something. They're just looking for someone to give them attention. So these pimps, um, they see that. They can see how girls are vulnerable and then they, they hone in on that. And you know, if it's somebody that's not thinking they're very pretty, they tell them how pretty they are and they buy them all the best clothing. If it's someone that's you know, never been out for a nice dinner, they wine and dine them and, and take them and treat them like gold. And these, these girls um, believe that it, there's, these intentions are actual real and that they're forming a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship when in the end, you know, they may be feeding them alcohol and drugs and buying them jewelry and clothing. In the end, all of a sudden it turns like there's a big bill for them to pay. And um, these weren't gifts, you owe me now. And that's how everything starts turning. That's when they start being manipulated even more. That's when they start being moved from town to town, um, isolated from their families, cell phones taken away. They can't reach out to their friends and family. And it's just a system. And these pimps are good at it. And how, why is it important? Because I see that there's a woman who was arrested. Um, is it common for a woman to be part of these networks? And how important is it for them to be there? Yeah, we're finding it more common. Um, because as I said, a lot of the time they end up, um, not all of the time, but a lot of the time they are first brought into this lifestyle and they're the ones that are being forced into prostitution. And then when the newer girls are brought in or they'll go out and actually recruit them to come in and a woman to woman is going to trust more than a woman to um, a male that they don't know. So they bring them in and once again they treat them like gold. They show them how great this life is and it takes them out of the actual game per se. They don't have to perform as many tricks or at, you know, tricks, or they're actually the ones controlling the girls um, and making them do it. It's, it's uh, you know, psychologically, when you meet a female that's a stranger and you meet a male as a stranger, a female and female relationship, you tend to gravitate more towards the female with trust. The women who don't want to come forward that you've reached out to, is that a loyalty thing or are they afraid? What is the, what's the reason why they're saying you don't want to come forward? Well, I think there's lots of different reasons. They've been, been been manipulated so far that they think that these people still care about them. They think that they, that relationship they can still go back to as bad as it is and as abusive, at least someone cares. They don't realize that this person has not just done it to them. They've done it to 20 other girls, the exact same scenario, the exact same showering of gifts, the exact same love. Um, and until they can actually see that, um, remove themselves from the situation and get a clearer outlook, it, they struggle with that. And what ends up happening is girls will come out of this lifestyle and then they go back. And um, because sometimes it's the only structure they know. What are, uh, what are some of the other aspects of vulnerability you can touch on? You're saying, you know, a lot of these girls and women, they crave some kind of attention because of something that's lacking. It's fairly widely known that um, um, girls who are subjected to abuse at home, they run away or they throw them. Uh, that, that's another kind of vulnerability where they can be drawn into the web of such a thing. Uh, you know, as well, uh, uh, mental issues, emotional problems, and poverty. 
I mean, are all these things also factors in this vulnerability that you say they have that's preyed upon? What are some of the other specific vulnerabilities they have that, that you know, make a common thread between them? Some of them are they don't feel attractive, they don't feel wanted, they don't get any male attention, and then all of a sudden this is upon them. We're getting girls from middle class families, we're getting them from schools um, that these, these pimps are actually in there recru recru recruiting. These girls are going to parties and you know where they would be with their friends and then meeting these strangers, taken to concerts and uh, you know um, getting the attention that um, you know we, we, we get girls that are from you know above middle class that um, they do have affluent lifestyles with their family, however, they're not getting the attention that they, they need um, due to whatever reason. It's always something that, uh, um, that they're running to. And of course, drugs and alcohol do come into play at some point, whether it's prior to, that's a vulnerability, or once they get in there, they get, uh, they get it forced on them and then they get hooked on them. How, how many are still uh, at large uh, you're looking for? One, One right now, yes. Can you talk to us about the scope of this investigation? Like, 29 individuals arrested, 61 charges. That seems significant, but I know this is, from your experience, are we scratching the surface here, or can you talk about that? We are scratching the surface. We are dealing with one gang right now. Um, it's our um, experience that the gang members in the city of Toronto, across Canada, are all involved in this. It's a lucrative business. Um, we have evidence of uh, members making over our gang members, um, pimps, over a three month um, time period making $90,000 and that's on one girl. So the commodity is, is human beings, the commodity, commodity is young girls. Um, it's not a gun, it's not drugs and the hardest thing for us um, in investigating these things is again the commodity is a person. So that's your evidence. Um, your evidence that you take to court is the person. And these, these poor girls have been um, abused mentally um, so badly that um, they're, they're hard trials um, on, these, on the victims and they're hard trials to get through the judicial system. So nine people arrested and one you're still looking for, correct? Correct. Yeah. And th this was a pretty widespread investigation <coughs> as well. What kind of cooperation did you have from other police? How did they get involved? Excellent cooperation. We work very closely with Montreal um, City Police. Uh, we work closely with, uh, you know, um, the, the Western provinces, BC, Van with Vancouver, with uh, Edmonton. Anytime we pick up a phone, we're all on the same page. Um, we're all trying to, you know, um, put a stop to this. Um, it's the same scenarios, whether you live in Edmonton or wh whether you live in Nova Scotia. The girls are getting moved from province to province, from town to town, and it's a circuit. It's a, definitely a circuit. The, the girls that uh, you're trying to reach out to to come forward, where are they based? Are they all over the place, all over Canada, mainly in the GTA? The ones that we've been dealing with here are they're mainly from Toronto. Um, again, we do know that there's there's other other girls um, from outside of Toronto, um, and we're reaching out to them. How so. Like certain, see, all I have to do is uh, open up any kind of uh, uh, free computer paper, per se, around the city. And there are always a, a for, for for services like that. Would they engage in any kind of uh, proactive advertisement to, 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 I guess, for such a better way to put it, for any business? Absolutely. So, um, you know, they, they, they post on, uh, on different internet sites. Um, these girls. Um, the sad thing is, if there wasn't a demand, we wouldn't have an issue here. Um, the sad thing is, if there wasn't a demand for underage girls, we wouldn't have an issue. But there, we have a huge demand for these, uh, these girls. There are thousands of uh, postings on, on uh, internet sites, and you know, they, they appeal, they have all different um, flavors to the posting that appeal to different, different uh, choices. Um, and you know, it's uh, sometimes it's like shooting fish in a barrel. And the the Johns, um, they're seeking them out, and the girls are turning you know ten to fifteen tricks a night because there's a demand for it. Um, and uh, you know, we do have the ability to enforce uh, the, the the Johns. They're the ones committing the criminal acts um, by buying 
um, this type of service, whether it's an underage girl or an overage girl, they're the ones committing the criminal acts. So is it online that these services are advertised? It's not word of mouth? How? No, majority, I'd say 99% of the stuff's online. So for you, it, in a way, it makes it easier to find, to find it? Because, you know, if they can access it, you can, access, you can find it as well, right? I wouldn't say it makes it easier, but it's available to us just like it's available to, to uh, John. Yeah. I'm up in Niagara Rest. Uh, I tell it to female, am I right? Or Correct. there's a Shamaya. Is that a woman too, or is that a man? I think there's two. Um, two. No, 99 percent. Oh, yeah, you know the other 10 percent is going to be. There is some paper ads still out there. Sorry, one percent. Yeah, there's still some paper ads out there, and they're still word of mouth. Um, yeah. During those lines, there were a couple of young people brought out. Um, were they charged with anything uh, or uh, arrested? I guess they were arrested, but have they been charged. Are you talking about during the warrants on that you observed? Second, yeah, taken out. Um, we told there were a couple of young people who did not photograph. Um, the young people who arrested that day. Right, not as part of this. No, no. How how long between the the time that they are brought into the system and then they end up being end up being forced into prostitution? How long does it take for that to happen? It could happen overnight. It depends on how they go about it. Sometimes they're so drug induced and uh, um, put into such a state that it happens immediately and then they're kept in that state for so long it turns into a haze. Okay. And you said like sometimes that concerts can be at school as well like in terms of location? We've got, a, we've got investigations that are ongoing now that uh, they've been recruited out of schools, yes. Yes. Thank you, that concludes today's conference.